Hello and welcome to the Car Care Not Channel. In today's video, we're gonna be revisiting the ultimate scan tool that we reviewed a while back, the Xtool D7, a scan tool that is very capable at a very good price from a company nobody's heard of. Many of you have looked at the website of the company and saw that there is an upgraded model of the D7, the D8. So I spent some time with the D8 after they finally sent me it, and then they also sent me a smaller scan tool, more of a more basic one. Because in that video I told you that the Blue Driver was a good basic scan tool if you need very basic capabilities. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the Xtool D8, comparing it to the Xtool D7. We're also gonna be looking at the A30M, the one you use for your scan tool. We're gonna see what's the difference, what's what, and how do these compare to the ultimate scan tool right after this. Let's start the review here. First, you notice the cases are exactly the same. Let's revisit our D7. Let's take it out. Here is the D7. We already talked about this one, but let's look at the D8. This is the D8. Size comparison, D8 is bigger. It is also a better battery life. But not only that, when we uh, stand the D7 and we let it go, it just flops. The D8, on the other hand, has a nice little stand in the back. Makes it a lot more functional. So that's the first impression, because before we even open the thing. The other improvement is this has a bigger battery. This actually has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. This only has a 4,000. If you remember from that review, this had a not so great battery life. This is a lot better. Other than these differences, Guess the company listened for the box. The box is exactly the same. However, the charger is better because they need a bigger charger for that bigger battery. Tucking everything in here is a little better than the D7, even though it's the same box. Not the end of the world. This still has a wired connection. And many of you have voiced concern over this not being a Bluetooth connection. Trust me, the Bluetooth connection has its ups, but it also has its down. The cable connection makes everything very quick, and this thing is lightning quick. Having said all that, we're gonna take a look at the D8, we're gonna take a look at the D7, and we'll talk about the main differences between the two. But now we have a new kit on the block, A30M. And this thing, the company sent me this, because they, did not like my comment that if you just wanna read codes very simply and very basic data list, don't buy this because this is way too much money for way too capable for what you need, just buy a blue driver. So they sent me this, which they told me in their exact words, this will blow the blue driver into the middle ages. And after some testing, it actually does. However, there is a lot of small problems with this. Let's start first with the main objective, the D7 and the D8. The D7 is very capable, and for the price, it is extremely capable. But the D8 is more money, and when you get into the $600 range, this enters a new segment of scan tools, becomes very competitive. Here's where this shines over the D7. This, is basically an OEM scan tool. It has the exact same functionality. For example, when you wanted to do some of the special features, you had to go in the special functions menu and you start fumbling through very confusing menus and all that, like key programming, for example. A lot of you have reported it's very complicated with this because it follows their software and it can get confusing and all that. But the D8 follows exactly the same as the manufacturer specified way of program, basically a copy of the original scan tool. So it has a lot more functionality in that. And the main thing is this can do customizations like changing your seatbelt chime, stuff like that. This cannot do that. This also has more TPMS capabilities than this one. This has a lot more capability and this price-wise is not there in the very high-end scan tools, but it actually, function-wise, it is in the high-end scan tool. But for DIY, this will still be the ultimate, 
if you're really that DIY advanced user that want to get into the OEM level scan tool or high level diagnosis and, and basically everything that a scan tool can do, this will be your answer and it will be well worth the extra expenditure. Having said that, before we dig into the actual test of this and the other one, let's talk about this guy. So this guy is basically a baby D7 with less capabilities that works off your phone. So it's a little app that you download on your phone and connects to this. And I have to admit one thing, when you buy it, it doesn't come with any instructions. All it comes with is this little piece of paper, which you will not think twice about. It's the little paper, you're probably gonna throw it in the box, forget about it. That is until you finally get the app to download, which takes forever to download for some reason, you realize that there's an activation. And on this little, very inconspicuous piece of paper, there's an activation code. You need this to make this work, otherwise it won't work. You also need a serial number, which is written here and on the thing. But then once you activate the app, the app is very clunky, I have to say that, you have to wait forever for all the diagnostic systems to download and they take forever. They take a lot of space on your phone and that's really the downside. But this, ladies and gentlemen, can read codes, can have special functions and can do bi-directional control. But it comes at a huge price because they did not make this and this the same and basically you'll abandon the D7 and go with this. This is a very DIY scan tool because the D7, the major thing about the D7 is, is how lightning speed fast it is. You work in a shop environment or you're a DIY that is advanced, you need to get things done. This works at a DIY weekend pace. It's very slow, it's very clunky. Yes, it could do bi-directional control, but it is also very slow and sometimes it doesn't work very well. And you know what? I don't blame them for that because you're working off Bluetooth and you're working off your phone. There's no hardware compatibility 100%. Things are gonna get slow. You pay less, you get less. You pay more, you get more. That's just how it works with scan tools. But at $129, it really puts so many other scan tools to shame. Without further ado, let's go to my 2022 Toyota Camry Hybrid behind me, hook all these up, and I'll show you the difference between the D7, D8, and what this thing is capable of. All right, so we got the D8 connected here. I'm gonna hit auto scan. One thing I will tell you about this, it will not pick up a 2022, of course, because they haven't updated it yet. This is a 2022, but it's exactly the same as a 2021. So we're gonna go Toyota USA model. We're gonna go Camry Hybrid 2021 H71, radar cruise, there we go, okay. Now here's the first difference between this and the D7. The D7 will only show you automatic scan, so it'll scan everything automatically. System selection, you'll select which system you wanna scan. Customize settings, that actually does not exist in the D7, it does exist in the D8, let's take a look at it. This is where you check all your settings, you can customize the settings, like your seatbelt ding, like many other options in the car. This was something missing from the D7 that I, many of you asked about, I told you it's missing, but it's actually available in the D7. Let's go to warning. And this is of course a little slower and this is hopelessly slow on text stream. If you go on the official Toyota scan tool, this is extremely slow and it's still a lot faster than that. But let's look at this, driver seatbelt warning buzzer function. This is the driver seatbelt buzz, like the noise, the warning, when you don't put your seatbelt and you start driving, you can turn that off. But what I am more interested in, function of the passenger seatbelt warning. And the reason I wanna turn this off, let's turn it off, it's off now, is sometimes I put stuff on the passenger seat, like, you know, a scan tool or something, and start driving, and it'll beep thinking there's somebody in the seat. That is super annoying, so now it's off, it's done, and this customization is exactly the same as it is with the Toyota models, like with the Toyota scan tool. And this of course works on other manufacturers as well, not just Toyota, these scan tools work on every make and model. So that is your customization. Another one that is helpful, security for example. 
If you have a, an alarm that keeps going off and until you figure it out, you can go in security and actually turn it off. And there, it gives you a lot more options here, not just security, but in the old models, it'll be just security on or off and you can turn it on or off. This is the first difference. Let's scan the car. I did with automatic scan and we'll see what's going on. Now you notice my car will have a bunch of codes because I've been testing a bunch of stuff. So we'll actually take a look at these codes. This car has 44 computers, a lot of computers on this one. So it's business as usual here. Let's go to the hybrid control because we do have a code. Let's see what that code is. You got lost communication with cruise control module message missing. That is something that I've been testing, so we're not going to worry about that too much. But the difference here between the D7 and the D8, you notice special functions that actually didn't exist in the D7. When you go there, it'll show you additional stuff. This would be, if you go on text stream, this will be under utility. But let's go to the engine, and that's when you'll see where this makes sense. Special function in engine. You can write the VIN number and the biggest one, learning value reset. So you remember in the older cars, you could delete codes by pulling the battery, disconnecting the battery, and it resets everything. Well, you can't do that on the newer cars because they have a stay alive memory that stays there even when you disconnect the battery. But you go when you go to learning value reset, it actually resets those values and resets everything back to factory stock. If you had a non-hybrid model, and this is unfortunately is a hybrid model that we're working on here. If you had a non-hybrid model, this is where you'll find your transmission memory reset. It'll just said reset memory, and that's how you reset the transmission memory. That is something that is capable of that the D7 didn't. Other than these two huge things, and I, I say huge because if you go to tire pressure monitor, for example, on the old ones and worked on some of them, didn't work on others, here you just go to special functions and TPMS, and you have ID registration. Very simple. This is exactly how it is in TechStream, and it's exactly the same here. But where this becomes such a big deal, because right now you're looking at, eh, okay, well, this is nice, but is it worth it? This is where it really becomes worth it. Front recognition camera. We go to special functions here. You can actually program this front recognition camera. This involves a lot more, and this is why this becomes a professional grade scan tool, is you need to set up targets and you need to follow the repair manual to set up the targets, but this actually can do it. This is pretty cool. You just go to your front recognition camera access misalignment adjustment, and then you can set up the targets and set it up. This is a very expensive thing at a dealership to do, and it has to be done every time you replace the windshield. With this scan tool, you can actually do it because the target, you can print it off the repair manual, follow the instructions in the repair manual, to set up the target at a specific place, and now you can do it with this. You don't have to take it to the dealership. And the thing goes on and on and on with these special functions. Every one of these things will have a special function in it. We go to smart key, for example, you want to program a key. Many people commented to me that in the D7, you had to go in this weird menu under special services or special functions, and it asked you a million questions, and it was very confusing. But in the D7, things are, again, more advanced. You go to special functions, and here it is, smart code reset. If you lose all your keys, you can re er erase keys, you can add keys, you can do diagnosis mode. This is again, more functionality. So that's, that's about it with the D8. But the one thing that is added is when you go to special function, you have two additional things. One of them is EEPROM. -E this is if you want to upload custom software for the cars. Not really something big with Toyota or with other manufacturers. This is actually a big deal. And the other one is ECU configurations. Not for every make and model. That these are only these are the makes and model that you can do customizations as of the day of filming this video. The scan tool is always getting updated, so you might want to update it always. But this is where you access, like if we go Toyota USA, automatic detection. This is where you can do those same customizations, but you can do them quicker from here without having to log in the car. This will only take you to customization because some other makes and model, it doesn't have that readily available, so you gotta go here. But this is the difference, the main differences between the D7 and D8. Let's look at the A30M. 
Now, this guy is an app from your phone. Takes forever to download, takes forever to update, but I finally got it done. So you gotta activate it as soon as you log in. But basically you plug the thing in the OBD2 connector. Let's go Asia, Toyota, diagnosis for Toyota. Again, things are very slow here. USA, automatic detection. And uh, take a nap, it'll eventually communicate and uh, get you going. It didn't pick it up again. So Camry Hybrid 2021. H71, radar cruise, automatic scan. And the automatic scan also takes an eternity. So uh, hang in there, It'll, uh, we'll get there eventually. Okay, we're finally done. Again, slow because you gotta pay to play if you want fast. But when you go here, same thing, you got your live data, which takes forever to log in as well. The theme here is very slow, so you really have to have a lot of patience, which all professional mechanics do not. So, ah, finally. So let's select all. And here is the live data. Now I know it's not showing a lot of live data and it's very slow and it doesn't refresh as much. The car is off, but it does show you a, a hefty amount of live data, of course, just like the D7. Actuation test, again, this takes a while. D7, we would have already been there. You just hit it and it's there, but same thing. You can pretty much activate everything similar to the scan tool, the original scan tool, but things are very slow. And in some of the tests, it actually dropped out halfway and it's not as reliable, but you know what? For the price, I think, you know, it makes sense. It's definitely better than the blue driver, but let's go to the special functions, which is services here. It's not special functions. They're pretty much the same as the D7, very similar, maybe missing a few, but Still, nonetheless, very capable. This one does not have the capability to do TPMS, even though it says it here, but you need an additional tool. Doesn't have customizations, doesn't have any of that, but it has very basic features. But for its price, if you're willing to be patient with it, not fall asleep when it's loading, it is actually pretty good, and that's pretty capable. And one more thing, folks, and actually I'm recording this part later after the filming of that, to clarify one thing. On the small or portable, the Bluetooth one, there is actually three models. One of them is the A30, and then there is the A30D and the A30M. Of course, their prices vary. So let me run through them real quick in case you are shopping around and so you would know what's the difference. The A30 will be the most basic and the cheapest. It'll have less special functions. It still does di bi-directional, still does all these other stuff, but it'll have less special functions. The A30D will be the middle one. It'll have a little bit more special functions, but not as much as the top end model of the A30M. The A30M is the one you saw in this video. If you want something a little cheaper because you're not gonna use some of these special functions, that one will actually make a lot of sense. So there you have it, folks. Now, as, as the date of filming this video, the D7 remains the ultimate scan tool for DIY. But if you're a DIY on a budget and you're willing to deal with the compromise of slow and not 100% coverage, this is for you because this is really capable for, for the price. The D8, we now go into real shop equipment. This is for a shop. I mean, you can really run a shop with this. And one note on this, and everybody have asked about this. Yes, we are using these on Toyota, but these are capable, oh, even the D7, this, and D8, they're all capable of all makes and models, even outside the United States, the models that we don't even have, Renault, Citroen, and many other models. This is not exclusive to Toyota. That, I wanted to clarify that, because a lot of you have asked about this. The D8 might be too advanced for DIY home mechanic. However, if you have the money, you want the latest and the greatest, and you want the best, this is it. If you're on a budget, but you have some money to spend, the D7 will be great because it is very, very fast and extremely capable. If you're really on a budget and willing to wait, 
The small guy will do the trick. And in the near future, I actually am in the process of testing multiple scan tools from other brands, comparing it with these three, because I think these three are really good price-wise, but we're gonna compare them to some really higher-end scan tools to see are they really better than the D8 and justify their price. And if you're interested in buying these, the manufacturer was, again, some of the, there were some issues with availability. They will not be available as much because, again, this is a small company they will sell out quick but they did give me some discount codes i'll leave all the links in the description if you're interested in buying one read some reviews look at them check out the discount code see if this is something in your budget everything will be in the description thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was helpful and informative if you like it consider giving it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing to the channel check out some of my other videos and until the next video folks may the lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day